start off with Nick Callow from Haters, please. No, no pressure there. Evening, Mikel. Hello. Um, hi there. Just, I just wonder how you're feeling yourself after losing the North London derby, North London derby, and the sort of been a build-up of pressure. It seems, and certainly in terms of Premier League results, are you feeling a pressure to, to deliver more from yourself? Of course, um, the demands uh, for this football club are the highest. We are not uh, getting the results in the league um, that we all expect. So, of course, the pressure is increasing. And more than the pressure, I would say the responsibility of all of us to, to make it happen um, next Sunday and, uh, and start winning football matches, which is uh, the most important thing. How do you cope with that? Do you try to get away and relax or do you work harder? I always work harder. I sleep less. And I try to encourage everybody that is uh, next to us uh, to be positive and believe in what we do. This is the way I approach the situation. Okay. Well, just a quick, just a quick one. Any sort of team news for tomorrow night's match? No, we have um, a few kids. We left um, some players at home as well. They play a lot of games. Um, we need a complete training week as well, which I think is going to benefit us. Um, but we're still going to have a very competitive uh, team tomorrow to play. Okay, who's at home? Sorry, I, I cannot name all of them, but uh, a few of them. Well, I'll go around there and have a look. Right, thanks for your time. Cheers. Thanks, Nick. Thanks, Nick. Move on to Jamie Weir from Sky, please. Good evening, Mikel. Hello. Um, can I ask you if there's any update on how serious Thomas Party's injury is? No, he, he got injured in the same area, not exactly the same spot, but the same area as he was before. Um, we am around him yesterday. There is an injury there, and uh, he will miss the next few matches. Do you think, in hindsight, it was an unnecessary risk to rush him back and that's maybe set his recovery back a few weeks? No, he did incredibly well. Uh, he was very confident. Um, we tested him three times. Uh, he had zero symptoms about it. But in football, you have a lot of unpredictable actions. And he went into the floor. His knee got stuck. After he needs to stretch and get up, immediately he put a lot of the stress in, in the similar area. And he felt it again. So it's a, uh, yeah, after he said he was a bit too early, I don't think it was because he was completely fine to play. Just one final question from me. Were you shocked by the events in Paris last night? Yes, obviously it was very surprising. Um, I could not hear exactly what happened. I seen the incident, but after I saw the reaction and the unity that both teams and both clubs, um, Shows. I'm sure if, if something um, really happened, that UEFA investigates the actions uh, really carefully because we've done a lot of work in recent years to try to avoid this kind of um, behaviors in in football. And uh, and I think it was a very strong message. Gracias. A ti. Thanks, Jamie. We move on to George coming from the BBC. Thanks, Dan. Um, Mikel, I just wondered, talking about the PSG game last night, is that something that the players have discussed at all today? Um, you know, and if Arsenal, if it was to ever to happen at Arsenal? I don't know if, if they have done it in the dressing room. We have done it around the club and with our stuff because it's, um, yeah, it's an incident that obviously has a lot of attention in the media uh, and around our industry. But uh, as I said, I hope that UEFA investigates the action uh, really well and uh, let's see what happens from there. Um, five weeks ago, you had that big win at Manchester United. Do you know what's what's led to this loss of form in the league? Um, mainly the results. Um, it's a strange to say, but we play much better against the Spurs than what we did against Manchester United. And against Manchester United, we got a penalty, we won 1 0. And um, we had an incredible performance. And when you lose the Derby 2-0, obviously we cannot talk about that because you have lost the game. But um, we cannot be so analytical just uh, with something, with the work that we do, because there are many other factors that contribute. Um, but obviously we are here to win football matches. That's the only thing that takes care of itself at the end. Um, and just one about Hector Bellerin's getting a bit of re a reputation for, for foul throws. Is that something you're going to discuss with him? I know Liverpool appointed a throwing coach. Is that something you might consider? He's done a lot. 
I think it was really, really harsh. And we sent the, the images to the Premier League. Uh, there been many, many incidents, much worse than that. And it wasn't never the case. So, um, but yeah, we will keep working and making sure that uh, we do the action properly, of course. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, George. Move to Chris Wheatley, please. Hi, Mikhail. Hello. Uh, Arsenal under 21s were in action last night. I was at the game. Uh, William Saliba uh, had a pretty good game. He was sent off, though, in the second half. Uh, a lot of the fans are desperate to see him play, and he's not registered for the Europa League. But when can we expect to see Saliba back in action? Well, well whenever we have the spaces and we believe that he's ready to, to play with us, to be fair, he's made a um, massive improvement in the last few months. It's been a really tricky situation for him and um, but as we mentioned before we designed a pathway for him and last year we could not fill that in because a lot of things that happened uh, to him in his personal life and professionally as well and uh, and now we made some um, a step forwards and the boy is running really hard it was a great game towards yesterday because as well and then martinelli finally playing back uh, for 40 by five minutes. So I think it was a really positive day for us in terms of that. Just on Saliba again, do you expect him to go out on loan in January or is your plan to keep them? It's something that we are discussing at the moment what's the best thing um, for us to do and, and it will be decided in the next few weeks. Thanks, Miguel. Thanks, Chris. Top man Brian from PA. Evening, Mikhail. Um, I assume one of the players that haven't hasn't travelled is is Pierre. Um, given that he's he's been unable to score in the Premier League at the minute, were you all tempted to take him and just to get him more minutes to try and get him back on the score sheet? When tonight or for tomorrow, you mean? For tomorrow, yeah. No, oh. no. Oh. I know, I know, he's your captain, but because of that, is he undroppable in the Premier League? Do you have to keep playing him every game, or can you take him out of the limelight at all? No, no one is undroppable. The end of the day, uh, we have to find the right place to win football matches. Um, but we cannot forget what Oba has done for this club and what he's done in recent months, not years ago. And uh, and as well, because I see how he's training, how he's behaving, how much he wants to turn the situation around. And when this see, I see that type of hunger, um, I stay strong to support that player um, with his status on the team and the performance that he has provided for this football. I think one of the things we'd all say about Pierre is he always plays with a smile on his face, but that does seem to have, have dropped a little bit with, with results and with his own performances. It is keeping him positive as a player and as a person just as important as his performances on the pitch at the moment? Listen, today um, and this week, the response that I've seen from the players, the reaction I saw from the players after the match, uh, I cannot be any prouder. Because I know how difficult it is for everybody at the moment. After losing a derby, you can be completely down. And I saw a completely different team. A team that wants to fight, that is united, that has a big belief in um, what they are trying to do. And they want to put themselves and push each other harder and harder. And Nova was uh, one of the main guys there. And today he was walking around the place with an energy that he wouldn't be associated to a team or a player that is suffering at the moment. And this is, for me, the way we have to approach it. Uh, just finally, is, is Pierre one of those captains that will that is vocal, that will stand in the dressing room and, and, and give his opinion to the players? Because obviously you sometimes have those captains that lead on the pitch, don't if you? If necessary, he would do it. But I think he transmits um, his energy, his desire and his commitment to the team in, in different ways. Thanks, Mikhail. Thanks, Mark. Thank you. Nick Ames from The Guardian. Hi, Mikhail. Hello. Um, just a couple for me, if that's okay. Um, you said in a recent interview with a Spanish journalist that you'd ultimately like to play 4-3-3, but you haven't got the, the resources or the specificity in, in five or six different positions. Um, that's quite a lot of players. Um, how, how long do you think it will take to get the players that you want in those positions? And, and what's the profile of the individual that you're looking for? I didn't understand the, some part of the question. If you're not clear, sorry. Okay, so you said in an interview with a Spanish journalist recently that you would like to play a, a 4 3 3 formation in the long term and that you still needed five or six more players in certain positions to do that. Um, 
that's quite a lot of players. How long do you think it will take to get those those individuals through the door? And what kind of profile of player are you looking for? There are players that can develop perfectly into that formation. Uh, one thing is the ideal thing that you would like to do and something the possibility you have to achieve that. And as coaches, we have to adapt to what we have, what we can do in the future. Obviously, we have to work to try to evolve it to where we want. And then because as well, you have to recruit players that are very specific for certain areas. And whether you have them or not is a question that uh, is at the moment uh, one of the issues that we have. Is, is five or six players um, 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 an accurate number, though, for what you think you need? No, but, but not just uh, to recruit, because it's players that are evolving that you would do not think that they could play in those positions, and now you see how they are performing on players. But a lot of players that I hear that they weren't capable to play in a way of playing, and they are. So as well, it's about timing, about coaching them, about them evolving in the right positions, uh, maturing, it's a bit of everything. And um, just one more, we're going to see a, a lot of younger players tomorrow night, of course, like, like we did last week and in previous weeks. But, um, but normally in the Premier League, it's back to more senior players. And that's understandable because the level is different. But do you think your senior players are justifying your faith in them at the moment? Well, if I pick them, it's because I believe um, we have a better chance to win football matches. But uh, we play young players in delicate moments as well. Um, we play young players in finals. Um, I think it's a bit of us to say that we just play them in the Premier League this senior players. OK, thanks, Mikael. Thanks, Dave. Last couple now. Uh, firstly, Tony Bank from The Express. Hi, Mikael. Hello. I just wanted to um, follow up on, on that question from Nick, actually. Um, even though there isn't a great deal riding on this match, you've qualified and um, the young players can use this opportunity to put pressure on the senior players, can't they? It's important for the young players. If the senior team is not playing as well as you want, the young players can put the pressure on, can't they? And they are putting the pressure. And we have some really good examples of things that have happened uh, in the last few months. And not only with players that are starting football matches in different competitions, but as well of players that have taken the spot of somebody senior in that team or that squad. So that process could continue? That process will continue. OK, thank you. Thanks, Tony. And finally, Simon Collins from Eden Standard, please. Hi, Mikael. Uh, just one from me, just following on from those events in Paris last night. Would you support your team if they did the same as what PSG in Istanbul decided to, to walk off the pitch in, in the face of racism? Absolutely. If the players um, believe that is the right thing to do, I will be right behind them. Thanks, Mikel. Actually, before before we go, guys, is there anyone from Ireland who wants to ask a question about from Dundalk's perspective, or are we all good? Yeah, sorry, I might jump in then if we if we have the chance. Hey, oh. Hi, Mikel. Just a line up on Dundalk, what you're expecting from them, and if you think they can challenge you tomorrow night. Well, first of all, I would like to congratulate them uh, for winning the FA Cup uh, on Sunday. Because it's a, a great achievement. So congratulations to the club and, and the coaching and staff and the players. And uh, yes, I saw a really brave team when they came to the Emirates. Uh, I think they will play with no fear in a beautiful stadium. And they will put things uh, difficult for us, I think. And I don't know, have you got to train on the pitch? Uh, in Dublin yet. It wasn't in great condition on Sunday for the Cup Final. I don't know if you've seen it yet. Uh, that's where we decided to, uh, to come straight to the hotel. We had our training session uh, at Colney in London and uh, let's leave the pitch a little bit uh, to breathe because they had uh, two intense matches in the last uh, 72 hours. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, guys, thank Bye. you very much. Bye-bye.